Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reneker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome into another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by Omaha Steaks. Josh All alone with you here, and what I'm going to be doing on this episode is going to be the first of a series of episodes that I've been wanting to do. I, I had this idea in mind as the season progressed and I thought, okay, I'm going to do this as soon as the season's over. And it's really important, honestly, that I do these videos between now and when free agency opens up in March. What I'm going to do, this series is going to be called State of the Browns. And I'm going to go position group by position group. I'm going to look at each player at each position group and kind of break down their 2023 season, the stats, you know, kind of some takeaways from their play on the field, what they did well, what they can improve on, those sorts of things. And I want to look at their contract situations heading into 2024 and beyond. So we kind of know after each episode, after each position group, who are the guys that the Browns are rolling into 2024 with for sure? Who are the guys who could be cut candidates, could be trade candidates, uh, may or may not necessarily be with the Browns in 24? And then which guys are free agents and either need to be resigned or they will be elsewhere in 2024. So I'm going to do all that for each of the position groups and we'll be releasing these videos periodically, like I said, between now and when free agency opens up, because that's when Andrew Barry is going to get to work, fill in this roster to, you know, patch those pieces that we lost in free agency and, and make any trades and moves that he needs to do. So Appreciate you guys tuning in. I mean, what what better thing can we be doing than talking Cleveland Browns football in February? It's the or well, I guess January is when I'm recording this. So anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I know that the Browns are out of the playoffs and that sucks. And we talk all the time, though, about how at the end of the season, every year, there's only one fan base, one team that walks away completely happy. And, you know, for everybody else, it's, okay, let's take what just happened this past season and what can we build on and what can we move forward with? And, you know, what are the things we need to fix? What are the things we can lean on? All that sort of stuff. And the off season is one of my favorite times. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I love football. I love watching football. It's so much fun. There, there is not much I look forward to more than a Sunday afternoon, kicking up on the couch, turning on the Browns, just watching the game. We talk about the Browns all season. We're a year-round podcast. Constantly following the news cycle on social media and just everything. It's There's a lot that goes in to what we do at the Dogs Podcast. And the off-season is fun. It really is because there's so much speculation and projection that we get to do. And it's, it's fun. We get to do all these things, look at the stats and all that. And then when the season rolls around... That's when we really just get to sit back and talk about what is actually happening. We can reference back to the offseason and say, okay, these are the things we talked about. These are the things we got right. And these are the things that we were off on. And, you know, I, I know that's just kind of the sports talk industry in general, but that just, just to give you a little insight into the way my mind works, and I don't know why I'm rambling too much, because we need to get into this first <laughs> position group that I want to talk about. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the cornerbacks. And before I do, I just, I, I got this, you know, if you're, if you're listening on audio, I'm holding up a bag of danger coffee. If you guys have been listening recently, you probably heard the ad reads. We got a new sponsorship with danger coffee. I've been looking for a coffee sponsor to promote with you guys, because again, I don't, I don't want to promote, we don't want to promote any sponsors that you know, we don't enjoy their products. We don't think you would enjoy their products because one, I mean, this is where we're kind of staking our name on, hey, try some Danger Coffee. It's really good. And then if it's garbage, well, that looks bad for us. And obviously sponsorships help us financially support the show, but it doesn't benefit us in any way if we don't promote products that are we think will benefit you. So if you're a coffee drinker, just real quick, I mean, this stuff, I mean, it's really good. I've been drinking this stuff every morning since we started the, the sponsorship. I made sure that I, I got my samples in and I tried it. 
before I even started promoting it because I don't want you guys drinking something that I haven't even tested before. So, you know, it's, it just says remineralized, mold-free, lab-tested. I didn't know that 45% of the world's coffee beans uh, contain mold toxins. So I, what I've been reading, I immediately started doing some research on that stuff. And, you know, most of what I read said you probably don't need to be too worried about it. The amounts of, you know, the mold toxins on most coffee is not probably anything to be concerned about. But like I said in the ad read, why even take the chance? This stuff is lab-tested, guaranteed, mold-free. So you know that you're drinking delicious coffee and it's safe. All right. Well, now that I'm done with that baked in ad read, do you guys like that? Like how I kind of swung that in there? Let's talk about these cornerbacks. All right. So state of the Browns at the cornerback position. Now the secondary took a huge leap this year under Jim Schwartz. And we've talked a lot about how night and day the defense was, whether they were at home or on the road at home, this defense was You know, at the beginning of the season, everybody talked about, oh, historically elite defense and all this stuff. Well, over the course of the season, overall, we found out that's not necessarily the case. But at home, they kind of were historically great. What they were able to accomplish at home. And again, I just don't understand how it can be that big of a difference from home and to the on the road. But it is whatever. That's what happened at home. They were freaking good, man. They were awesome. On the road, not so much. But overall, they were good enough at home that they were still the top defense in the league. With how bad they were on the road, that tells you just how good they were at home because that the home numbers were able to pull the entire defense with those piss-poor road numbers still up into the number one spot. So that's impressive. And these, these cornerbacks in the secondary were a pivotal part of that. So I want to talk about these guys kind of... I'll talk about in them in order of age and contracts and that kind of stuff. So that means, of course, we're kicking things off with the Pro Bowler Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward, five foot eleven, 190 pounds, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, shout out their hometowns, Macedonia, Ohio. He played at Ohio State. Go Bucks! A fourth overall pick in 2018. He will turn 27 years old in April, and this in 2023 was his sixth season in the NFL. So now we'll dive into just some stats on Denzel Ward. All right, so here in 2023, Denzel Ward played 13 games. He had 34 tackles. He had one tackle for loss. He had one forced fumble, 11 passes defensed, and he had two interceptions and, what does it say, 20 total interception yards. So Denzel Ward, one of the things with Denzel Ward, and I'll just kind of spitball here a minute you know we talk well I don't know we necessarily talk too much but there's a lot of talk amongst Browns fans about Denzel Ward or the warden or sometimes the hospital warden and or hospital ward he unfortunately has this reputation for not not playing full seasons which is fair he never has missing a ton of games which is a little less fair because he doesn't miss a ton like I said this year 13 games played means he missed you know, we'll just kind of go on a 16-game basis here because that Week 18 Bengals game does not count as a game miss for any of the starters. So really, he only missed three games this season. Last year, he missed three games. The year before that, he missed two games. The year before that, four, four, and three. So it looks like four games is the most he's ever missed in a season in his career. So wow. I, I, one thing that I've said before on the show, and I'll say it again here because I still believe it, when Denzel Ward misses a game, one game, it feels like more than a game because his impact on the defense in the secondary is so great that when a guy like Denzel Ward misses a game, it really does feel like he's missed multiple. I don't know how else to describe that other than his his level of play is just it is that high. He is that good of a cornerback in the NFL that – When he's not out there, you feel it. You definitely feel the pain. What's up, Browns fans in Ohio? If you haven't signed up for Caesar Sportsbook yet, now is the perfect time to do so with the NFL playoffs underway. New customers will get their first bet on Caesars up to $1,000 when signing up with our promo code DOGS1000. That means if your first bet loses, you will get your full wager returned as a bonus bet up to $1,000. Caesars offers daily profit boosts as well as Caesars rewards credits on every wager, which can be redeemed for bonuses, sports tickets, and other VIP experiences. 
If you're ready to join Caesar Sportsbook, go download the app and register with our promo code DOGS1000 to make sure your first bet is covered. Offer is only available for new customers who are 21 and older and physically present in Ohio. Please gamble responsibly. If you or a loved one has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check the episode description for the full terms of the offer to see if you can qualify. So in terms of his stats, you know, his tackles this year were actually they were the lowest uh, tackle total of his entire career. He had 53 last year, which was he tied for his highest with his rookie season, dropped down to 34 this year. Uh, interception mark, I mean, just going through his career, it's been 3-2-2-3-3-2. Three, two, two, three, three, two. So pretty much on par with his his annual interception rate. Passes defensed, you know, his high in his career was 18, 10, 15, 11 this year. So 11, he's done that three times. That seems pretty standard. So I guess basically what I'm saying by that is Denzel Ward had a Denzel Ward season he missed a couple games uh, aside from the low number of tackles his you know he picked off a couple passes you know broke up quite a few passes he doesn't get targeted a lot that's another thing to keep in mind with Denzel Ward is I mean quarterbacks offensive coordinators they're not scheming plays to make sure that they're trying to target receivers in the vicinity of Denzel Ward it's just that's the way it, it is and that's also what makes him such a valuable player in the secondary so if we go over and look at, well, okay, I'm sorry. I did have one stat note here. With the cornerbacks, I know a lot of you probably are going to be screaming, especially when we get to a guy like Greg Newsom. Missed tackles, missed tackles. Okay, I know. The, the missed tackles were super disappointing this year because I was really hoping, and I'm sure we all were with Jim Schwartz, this, this, defense, this defense got to the level of nasty, of dog, of gritty get in your face hit you hard and get up and dance about it level that we've been wanting the browns defense to be at forever and they got there the missed tackles still hung around this year though so denzel ward had eight missed tackles uh he played 617 snaps in those 13 games so I looked at the PFF numbers and this is everything I talk about here with these guys is going to be a minimum of 500 snaps. And that came out to 88 qualifying cornerbacks in the NFL this season. Denzel Ward had a 69.6 defense grade. That was 29th out of 88. He had a 69.8 coverage grade, 34th out of 88. He had a 77.0 passer rating when he was targeted. That was 19th best. Uh, to give you some benchmarks in that category, because that's a big deal. What is the pa- what is the quarterback's passer rating whenever they're targeting you on average over the ye- over the course of the year? So, like I just said, Denzel Ward was at seventy seven. Sauce Gardner, who we all think is a pretty damn good cornerback for the Jets, he was at seventy six point five, and then fellow Brown Greg Newsom was at seventy six point four. So, just to kind of give you an idea of some of the names there with him. Denzel Ward was targeted 66 times, allowed 34 catches for 467 yards and three touchdowns. Now, here was his best stat. that The, the catches and targets, 51.5% completion rate when targeted. That was seventh best, seventh lowest in the NFL among these 88 qualifying cornerbacks. His 467 yards allowed, that was 31st lowest. The Browns' big three cornerback trio here, These guys were all together on that list. So you had Greg Newsome, we'll get to him, but he had 455 yards allowed. That was 29th. Martin Emerson was at 466. That was 30th. And then here's Denzel Ward at 467, 31st. So they're kind of all back to back to back. Denzel Ward gave up 272 yards after the catch. So that was 58% of the total yards he allowed came after the catch. So the way I was looking at that stat, and I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you guys here. And you you know if you've watched enough Dogs podcasts, especially my solo shows, you know I do a lot of stats. And a lot of it is what do the stats tell you. So when I'm looking at yak, yards after catch, and total yards. So Denzel Ward gave up 467 total yards on the season. 272 of those came up after the catch. So what I'm looking at with that number is I want that number to be low. I want I want the total, the percent total of the total yards that is yak to be low because that means if a guy's getting a lot of yak on you, it means he's catching the ball and then he's doing something with it. 
you want your yak total given up to be low if you're a defender because it probably means you're missing a tackle, means maybe you're out of position, you weren't in position to you know defend the pass, to make a tackle right at the catch point. So Denzel Ward's yak, it was 58% of his total. That was the 19th most among these 88 qualifying cornerbacks. So that, I wasn't really thrilled with that number. Uh, 13.8 yards per catch. That was 22nd out of 88. He had three penalties on the season. And just to give you guys an idea of his snap breakdown, because this kind of plays into what position these guys are normally at on the field. Denzel Ward played 565 of his snaps on the outside. He played just 22 snaps total the entire season, only 22 in the free safety position and just 28 snaps in the box. So he was primarily and predominantly an outside cornerback based on his snap breakdown. So again, overall, good season for Denzel Ward, made the Pro Bowl. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, how many times has he made the Pro Bowl? Let me just kind of switch over here and look. That would be his third Pro Bowl this year. He made it his rookie year in 18, back in 2021, and now again in 2023. So good for Denzel Ward. Always happy to see Cleveland Browns making the Pro Bowl and getting some recognition and honors. All right, so now let's look at the contract situation for Denzel Ward with the Cleveland Browns. Heading into 2024, Denzel Ward has a cap hit of $23.5 million. So what I like to do on overthecap.com, pull up these players' contracts, and then on the side you get the option to, to change the numbers based on whether they're cut or traded before or after June 1st. And the way I don't understand contracts the way that GMs and, and these people that run this website obviously do, but I know what to make of the numbers when they pop up. So here's the information as it's showing to me on the screen. Pre-June 1st, Denzel Ward ain't going nowhere. Denzel Ward has a dead cap hit pre-June 1st of $42 million. It means the Browns, if the Browns were to cut him, and this isn't going to happen, I'm just giving you an example, but if the Browns cut him, before June 1st, they essentially lose $18.5 million against the cap. That just doesn't make any sense. So that's not going to happen. But whenever you go to post June 1st on the cut, now again, Denzel Ward is not a player that's going to get cut. So, you know what, actually, since that's the case, I'm not even going to look at that. Let's look at post, because they can't trade him. They cannot trade him before June 1st well, I take that back. I guess they kind of could. His dead cap on a trade would be $26.7 million, meaning they would lose $3.2 million against the cap if they did it before June 1st. But if they trade him after June 1st, and I'm not saying they're going to, but this is, this is really interesting. So again, cap number 23.5. His dead cap, if he's traded post June 1st, is only $7.7 million. The Browns could... And we, we talk about all oh, the, the cap situation, the contracts, all this stuff. Where are they going to get the money? I love Denzel Ward. I doubt this happens. I don't think he's going anywhere. I would be shocked if he did. But the Browns could trade him post June 1st and save $15.8 million to the cap. So that's just something to, you know, just kind of keep in mind when we're, we're looking at the player personnel moves as the offseason unfolds the draft and you know the summer and the, the camps and everything roll around so again i'm not predicting that's going to happen i'm just saying those are the numbers that are showing on over the cap and whenever i whenever i first looked at the dead cap i you know i said eh, he's not going anywhere the browns can't can't move him he's we're locked into him well maybe not maybe not but anyway like i said don't think anything's going to happen denzel ward I mean, unless something crazy goes down, he will be your leading cornerback for the Cleveland Browns in 2024. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Browns fans, the Super Bowl is decided and the rat turds are not going to be there. It's the Chiefs taking on the San Francisco 49ers on February 11th. But before the big game, make sure you guys get your orders in at Omaha Steaks. 
Don't throw your Super Bowl parties or, you know, even your Valentine's Day meals, because let's face it, that's coming up too, guys, real fast. Do not host these events without the best meats and foods available from Omaha Steaks. Right now, when you order at omahasteaks.com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S, you will get four free pork chops and four free boneless chicken breasts with your order. That's eight free additional items when you place your order right now at omahasteaks.com slash dogs. I've been saying it forever. Best steaks, best burgers, steak burgers. Oh my gosh. The best chicken, the best ready to eat meals, the desserts for Valentine's Day. I'm telling you, you make sure you add the caramel apple tartlets to your order. She's going to love them. So go now, get it in time for all the big things happening coming up here in February, omahasteaks.com slash dogs. This episode is sponsored by Factor. Browns fans, get started on your New Year's resolutions with Factor, America's ready-to-eat meal delivery service that takes all the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success here in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, all the prep work, and the cooking fatigue. Instead, you can get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more, plus they have over 55 weekly add-ons, you guys have a ton of nutritious and flavor-filled options to kickstart your resolutions. I've personally tried Factor's meals. They are incredible. I got a whole bunch of different varieties of things just to see what was what I liked, what I didn't, and I'm not exaggerating one bit. I liked them all. You throw it in the microwave, two minutes, and bam, you have a nutritious meal ready to go on the fly. And the nice thing is when things get hectic, Factor is totally flexible. You can change your order up every week with plans from four to 18 meals per week. You can even pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime you want. So here we go, guys. Let's stress less over our meal times in the new year. Let's get Factor's no prep, no mess meals, no shopping, no cooking, no cleanup. Head to factormeals.com slash the dogs50. That's all one word, the dogs50. Use code the dogs50 to get 50% off your order. That's code the dogs50 at factormeals.com slash the dogs50 to get 50% off. Happy New Year, everyone. What's so special about Hero Bread's soft, fluffy, and delicious breads, buns, and tortillas? These ultra-low net carb baked goods contain zero sugar, fewer calories, and more protein than the leading brands, and are high in fiber to support gut health. Shop now at Hero.co. Gregory Newsom the second. Let's talk about Greg Newsom, six foot one, one ninety. Shout out Chicago, Illinois, hometown. He played his college ball at Northwestern here in the Big Ten with the Ohio State Buckeyes. He was the 26th overall pick in the first round in 2021 by the Browns. He is 23 years old. He will turn 24 this spring. So he's still a pretty young guy. This was just his third season in the league that he completed. So there's a lot of career left for a guy like Greg Newsom. Now, we talked about the missed tackles for Denzel Ward. Greg Newsom had 10 missed tackles over the course of 2023. But overall, his stats, Greg Ward had the most tackles of his career so far. Rookie year, 37. Last year, 42. This year, he had 49. He had four tackles for loss, which before this season, he had zero to his career. So that was nice to see him getting more involved in the in the backfield. He had a half a sack, which he had a half a sack last season. He had his first two ever interceptions. His first two uh, seasons of his career, no picks for Greg Newsom. He had two this season and one for a touchdown. We all remember against the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. One of our plays of the year nominees for the Mad Dog Awards this year. Just a, a great play. Awesome and a fun highlight to watch over and over because screw Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Gosh, I hate the Ravens so much. Anyway, okay, now let's uh, <laughs> let's move into um, some of these PFF numbers for Greg Newsom. So he had a 69.6 defense grade. That's 29th out of the 88 cornerbacks. 74.6 coverage. That's 23rd. He had a 76.4 passer rating when targeted. That was 17th. He was targeted 67 times, allowed 39 catches for 455 yards and two touchdowns. So he had a 58.2% completion percentage against him, which was 30th. If you remember, Denzel Ward had, I believe it was... What? He was seventh, right? Yep, seventh best in the NFL among these cornerbacks. So Greg Newsome, I mean, honestly, the percentages wasn't weren't that big. 51.5 for uh, Denzel and then 58.2 for Greg. 
So his 291 yak yards, that was 62.4% of the total. That put him at 74th out of the 88 cornerbacks. Now, I was talking about the yak stuff, you know, in the last segment with Denzel Ward. Not great for Greg Newsom. Really not great. Um, would love to see that number come down a lot. His yards per reception, 11.7. That put him at 39th out of 88. He had five penalties on the season and a snap breakdown. 276 snaps outside, 397 in the slot, 83 in the box. So Denzel Ward was very much utilized both inside and in the slot. He was definitely in the box a whole lot more than Denzel Ward. But where Denzel Ward was predominantly that outside cornerback at all times for the most part, uh, Greg Newsom was very much moving back and forth in the slot, outside. And so that was more his role in 2023. So this is where things with Greg Newsom get a little, a little interesting. Um, the Browns again. Andrew Barry is a genius when it comes to the cap situation and the contracts and everything that he he just he knows how to finagle these things. He knows how to do what he's doing very well. There's going to be a lot of restructures and things of that nature. But a guy like Greg Newsom. When the Browns, and we'll get into Martin Emerson next, but when the Browns have Denzel Ward and a guy like Martin Emerson in the cornerback room, and quite frankly, an up-and-coming guy like Cam Mitchell, who looked decent this year. I won't say he looked great or good, but I mean decent. It looked like he can be serviceable. looks like he can play some ball at the NFL level. So the Browns have to make a decision here with Greg Newsom Because he's entering the fourth year and final, technically final uh, year of his rookie contract, since he was a first-round pick, the Browns have the option to pick up a fifth year on Greg Newsom. So if they decide to exercise Greg Newsom's fifth-year option, and I'm kind of just learning the, the nitty-gritty details of all this stuff too. So if, if anything I'm saying here is wrong or you know for a fact, you're listening, you're like, I know for a fact he's got that wrong, drop in the comments, just let me know. I don't, I, I don't mind <laughs> learning what I'm doing wrong here if I am, but... What OTC is telling me about Greg Newsom, the Browns exercise his fifth-year option, they will owe him twelve, about $12.2 million against the cap next year in 2025. So that would be his fifth year. And then what it says, <clears throat> excuse me, what it says is the fifth year becomes fully guaranteed and any base salary in the player's fourth year that was not fully guaranteed will become fully guaranteed. So I'm trying to see here. It looks, yeah, so all $4 million that Greg Newsom is owed against the cap this year, if they pick up his fifth-year option, that all, all $4 million of that becomes guaranteed. So here's the interesting thing with Greg Newsom and his situation. The Browns could trade Greg Newsom. Now, again, I'm not saying they're going to. None of this stuff is saying they're going to do this or that. I'm just telling you what could happen. If the Browns were to decide to trade Greg Newsom, they would essentially save $2.4 million against the cap this year. And obviously, they would not be taking on that uh, $12.2 million against the cap next year. So this will be interesting to see how it unfolds, because if as soon as the Browns come out and announce they've, they've exercised a fifth-year option on Greg Newsom, he's locked in for this year, he's locked in for next year. Those contract numbers are fully guaranteed. And like I said, it would be $4 million this year and twelve point two million against the cap next year. Now, what the Browns can do and may do is explore trade options for Greg Newsom because until they pick up that fifth year option, they can trade him to save $2.4 million against the cap. So we will see what happens with Greg Newsom. Obviously, I lay Greg Newsom. I, I know, I know the end of the season wasn't great. His performance in the wild card game was not great. It it sucked, honestly, but overall he had a good year. He had a really good year. He has continued to develop and grow and get better each season so far. It's what you want to see with these guys, obviously, especially your first-round picks. He's kind of lived up to that billing, I I believe. I, not every guy you select in the first round is going to be an all-pro, but can he be a very good starter? That's really the baseline you're looking for, and Greg Newsom is a very good starter. He is, but he will be a guy to watch what the Browns decide to do here in the offseason before, and I just looked up, they have until May 2nd. So they get to go through the draft. 
they get to see how things unfold in free agency and in April when the draft takes place before they have to decide if they're going to pick up the fifth-year option on Greg Newsom. So that date is May 2nd. We will be talking more about Greg Newsom as the offseason goes and as we get closer to that May 2nd deadline until, you know, if they come out and announce in a month that, hey, we're exercising the fifth-year option, then we don't have to worry about it. We know what the deal is. But until that happens, we're going to have to speculate and try to see what what the Browns are leaning toward doing with Newsom. All right, now we'll move into the biggest Pro Bowl snub this year, Martin Emerson Jr., six foot two, 201 pounds, big body cornerback. Shout out to Pensacola, Florida, hometown, played at Mississippi State in college. He was Andrew Barry's third round pick in 2022, 68th overall. What a slam dunk third round pick Martin Emerson has turned out to be and continues to turn out to be. He's 23 years old. He will turn 24 in September. And this was his second year in the NFL. Start with the bad stat first, like I did with Greg Ward, or Greg Ward, Greg Newsom. And just like Greg Newsom, Martin Emerson had 10 missed tackles this season. We'll talk more about missed tackles throughout the offseason, I'm sure. But anyway, his stats for the season, 59 tackles, just four fewer than he had last year as a rookie. He didn't have any sacks. He had one sack last year. He had a tackle for loss. Um, but he did lead the team with four interceptions. He had the most interceptions on the Browns in 2023. He played every game. He played 16 games. Obviously, he didn't play in that last one. Don't need him out there against the Bengals in a meaningless week. So four picks and, I, I mean, uh, 14 passes defense. He had 15 last season. Martin Emerson's dog. And we love Martin Emerson on the show. Blake's been... <laughs> Blake's been texting him and trying to get him on the show for like two seasons now hasn't worked out but you know at least we're having conversations with him so moving over to pff martin emerson had a 65.8 defensive grade that was 45 out of 88 cornerbacks 66.5 coverage grade that was 44th none of these guys are in the top five or top 10 of these pff grades but again we we take pff grades with a grain of salt 45.3 45.3 passer rating. This is the number that matters the most, at least to me. 45.3 passer rating when targeted. That was not top 10, not top five. That was second best in the entire NFL among quarterbacks. Martin Emerson was awesome this season. We talked about why he should have been a pro bowler. To me, This number right here should have been the leading argument as to why Martin Emerson should have been a pro bowler, followed by the stat that he gave up precisely zero touchdowns this season. So you've got the Browns have the cornerback that that had the second lowest passer rating when targeted, and he gave up no touchdowns on the whole season. Martin Emerson is awesome, and Martin Emerson could be a, again, could be a reason why the Browns consider trading a guy like Greg Newsom. So we'll see what happens with that situation. But man, Martin Emerson, you're awesome. You are you have come in here and just wowed everybody. He was targeted 70 times, allowed just 33 catches for 466 yards, and like I said, zero touchdowns. And while the other two cornerbacks, like I mean, you look at Greg Newsom had a 58.2 completion percentage against him. That was 30th best in the league. Martin Emerson. 47.1% completion, number two in the league in that stat as well. 466 yards given up was the 30th lowest. So, like I said, these guys all kind of gave up roughly the same amount of yards on the year between them. He had 133 yak yards. And remember what I was saying about Denzel Ward and Greg Newsom. Like, I wish I wish their percentage, the yak out of the total would be lower. Martin Emerson's was 28.5%, 19th lowest among all cornerbacks. So much better than the other two guys. You know, in that regard, meaning not a lot of receivers catching the ball and doing anything after the catch when Martin Emerson is in coverage. Yards per reception, 14.1. That was 71st out of 88. So pretty high yards per uh, reception. But again, the low yak percentage was key for me on that one. Guys might be catching the ball deep on him, but they're not going anywhere after the catch, typically. Nine penalties. So this was this was a category that was a knock on Emerson. There were only six cornerbacks in the NFL that had more penalties than Martin Emerson. So he was penalized a lot. We talked about how a lot of those penalties were kind of bullshit, ticky-tacky penalties. But again, 
this is the number. That's the number of penalties that were issued against him, unfortunately. So his snap breakdown, 791 snaps on the outside, just 16 in the slot and only 47 in the box. So Martin Emerson Jr. was predominantly like Denzel Ward, an outside cornerback in Jim Schwartz's defense here in 2023. Again, Emerson, young guy, going into 2024. He just has a $1.5 million cap hit. So, I mean, it's super low for one of the, uh, we could call him one of the elite cornerbacks in the league. I think that he's showing that he's definitely at least touching that. He's he's coming into that category of, of cornerback in the NFL. Is he elite already? Mm, maybe, maybe not. But you can't argue that he's not at least approaching it because he is very, very good. Like I just talked about all the numbers and what he was able to do this season. So like I said, 2024, $1.5 million cap. Uh, I mean, we can look at the the pre-June 1st trade. I mean, the, the, they could save $900,000 by trade. They're not trading Martin Emerson. So Martin Emerson will be a Cleveland Brown in 2024. And I cannot wait to see what this kid is going to do. Next year, year two in Jim Schwartz defense, it's going to be freaking awesome. And finally, we will talk about Cameron Mitchell. He was a rookie this season. He was a fifth round pick, 142nd overall, 5'11", 191 pounds. Shout out to Chicago, Illinois, another Chicago guy. He played college just like Greg Newsom at Northwestern, just 22 years old, and he'll turn 23 at the beginning of September. So as far as stats go for Cam Mitchell, uh, he got three starts, but he played in uh, 13 out of the 17 games this season. He did have, uh, he had a four game period where he was on IR. He was gone. And when, when he was gone and Denzel Ward was gone at the same time, boy, did we feel it in the secondary. And when Kim Mitchell was filling in for injuries this season before he suffered his own injury, I'll tell you what. Now, he's not Martin Emerson. He's not coming out here and blowing anybody out of the water and and making fans go, wow, who's that guy? But, you know, he wasn't making you go, who's that guy? Get him off the field. No, he was doing a pretty good, I mean, for a fifth-round pick, a rookie, I thought he played very well. I thought he held his own, and I thought he showed some very good promise and just another great cornerback selection by Andrew Barry in the NFL draft. So for the year, 18 tackles, one tackle for loss. He did have a sack, two passes defensed, uh, and zero interceptions. With a very, very, very close near pick six that we all remember he dropped, and it was like, ah, come on, kid, hold on to the ball. But, you know, again, fifth-round rookie, still thought he did pretty good overall. So I'm not going to dive too, too deep into Cameron Mitchell. Like, you know, like I said, three starts. He played in all 13 games, but he didn't get a whole lot of action because the Browns have three absolutely awesome cornerbacks in front of him. But he did play uh, 277 total snaps. His defense grade on PFF, 58.1. His coverage was a 60. He did have six missed tackles on the season. His He was targeted 29 times, allowed 22 receptions. So his reception percentage was a 75.9 which is super high gave up 201 yards 9.1 yards catch gave up two touchdowns which on such limited targets you you would hope that there'd be none but again fifth round rookie so you know we'll give the kid get a pass two touchdowns and he had 117.2 passer rating against him so again not the high level numbers obviously the other three guys i mentioned but still this is a guy who, I mean, I'll pull up his contract here, but it, it, contract doesn't really matter for these young guys. He's a, he's not even a million dollars against the cap in 999000 in 2024. So Cameron Mitchell will be on the Browns cornerback depth chart in 2024. So just some quick mentions here. The Browns did sign Vincent Gray to a reserve future deal um, here in the offseason. And then other cornerbacks that were on the team in 2023 who are now going to be free agents, Mike Ford and Khalif Halisi, who was an undrafted free agent last year. So we'll see. We'll see if they bring back Ford or Halisi uh, in any capacity for 2024. Andrew Barry is going to be very active filling out the cornerback room because it's an important position. And they put a lot of emphasis on this position in the past, and I have no reason to believe they will not continue to do so. So with all that being said, 
I really believe the Browns are in a good spot at cornerback. The offseason will be interesting to see how things are handled with contract situations. Denzel Ward's contract is high. There is a possibility that they can move off some of that money. Greg Newsom could be, at, and like I said, just because I say he could be doesn't mean I'm saying he will be or I think he's going to be. I'm just saying he could be a trade candidate. We'll see what happens there. Um, they uh, they have his fifth-year option to consider. Martin Emerson locked and loaded for 2024. Let's get after it again. Actually get named to the Pro Bowl this time because he should have been in 23. And, of course, Cam Mitchell. And those four guys at the moment are your Cleveland Browns cornerbacks that are on the roster ahead of free agency and the draft. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. I appreciate you checking out this first State of the Dogs episode or State of of the Dogs, State of the Browns episode. And I've got more of these coming. We're going to be talking about safeties and defensive line. And then we're going to move over to the, you know, we'll we'll do linebackers. I'm going to do defense first because the defense was just so awesome this year. And most of the injuries we suffered were on the offensive side of the ball. So we'll save that for last. Defense first. We'll go through those position groups and then we'll move over. We'll hit the O-line, the running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks, all that stuff. So I appreciate everybody watching, tuning in. Please, I didn't say this at the top, but if you're watching this on YouTube, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Please share this on your social media pages. I just, we would love to get this podcast out in front of as many people as possible. And if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, iHeart, Amazon, wherever you're listening to your podcast. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing and following the show. And last but not least, jointhedogs.com. Become an official Dog Pack member. Jump in our Discord and catch our After Hours episodes during the off-season. They get very wacky, wild, and out of control. And they're pretty much just about whatever you guys want us to talk about. So it's a lot of fun over there on the After Hours. So again, until I talk to you guys in the next State of the Browns episode, let's go Browns. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.